And today we are going to combine a little bit of poetry and Emerson, I don't know if you've read anything he's written. Um, he's a little bit, he's not as famous as like Aldo, Leopold, or any of those big names, but he's still pretty cool. So each stop we're gonna do, we're gonna read a little bit of his, um, like little excerpts from his essays. And then um, we're gonna talk, we're gonna apply it with science to kind of understand the world around us a little bit more and use our imagination a little bit. So it's gonna be, I, I wanted to try this and just see how it goes. So give me your honest input, cause kinda out there, but we're gonna try it. So the first excerpt for our intro to kind of put us into the mind state of where we want to be is this. So the sun illuminates only the eye. The sun illuminates only the eye of the man, but shines into the eye and those and the hearts of the children. The lover of nature is he whose inward and outward senses are still truly adjusted to each other, who has retained the spirit of infancy even to, into the era of manhood. And I just think that's pretty cool thinking about, you know, when you were a kid, I. That's a little closer for me, but you kind of remember the fun things that you did as a kid or how you felt in the woods when you were growing up. And I think those memories are pretty cool to hold. Um, and the imagination that everyone had when they were a kid is so hard, to, even for me, to like pick back up again when reality likes to slap you in the face. So um, while we're walking, I just wanted you guys to think of a few stories that you can either share with the group um, or just kind of keep to yourself, find things around nature that kind of remind you of wherever you grew up or stories or different stuff like that. So, yeah. So let's head off to our first stop. But, um, so our next verse is from the perspective, um, essay that Emerson wrote. And so it is. The problem of restoring the world's original, original and eternal beauty is solved by the redemption of the soul. The ruin of the, the ruin or the blank that we see when we look at nature is in our own eyes. And I kind of really loved that verse. I, I, I read this book and I underlined like everything. So it was really <laughs> fun going back and getting to kind of just get to the really good parts. Um, but I, I love that verse because it's all about perspective. And I think wetlands especially, I know we're kind of on the forest part, but like the wetlands all around us, um, the it's all about perspective. And I think a lot of people think that wetlands were a waste of space back then. Um, and I don't know if you guys knew this, but 1978 was the first time wetlands were described at it like in the government so that's when they were identified and that's when they that's when we learned that they needed to be protected which was only 45 years ago which, which kind of blows my mind um and i think when we look at wetlands sometimes with these boardwalks we can like get inside of them and that's super super cool so we can learn more about them um do you guys know what this is yeah. yeah, what is it? Cat it's a cattail, yeah. <laughs> so these are, I, I made it easy for kids, but yeah. <laughs> you guys know, question, check. But um, yeah, so these are cattails, and everyone normally knows them because of their really cool, like, hot dog shaped top um, that disperses seeds. But even though cattails are kind of goofy, they serve a gigantic role in wetlands. So they have these really cool root systems that connect them to each other and hold the soil in the ground, which is super, super important, especially when all the soil is wet and there's water moving. This stuff needs to stay, otherwise erosion will happen and all the soil will leave the wetland. So making sure that these are there is awesome. Another thing that they do is they have um, microorganisms in their root systems that help other um, that other things can eat, like bugs. So they're, they're food sources to bugs, they're food, they're food sources to uh, birds. They also are homes for birds when birds are migrating. So there's all these things that these cattails can do 
for the environment and I think that making sure that we understand what's around us opens up a whole new light to what plants can do. So I have this app, it's called Picture This, and I don't know if you guys are real tech savvy, but Picture This is a super, super cool app that you can have on your phone. You can take a picture of any plant and it'll tell you what it is. And then it has a description. Since there's only three, I can get my phone out and just show you. And I have mine too, if we want to. Yeah. Is that the one you have? Picture no. This. No, I have them. Um... I there's a few of them. There's a, diff a couple different plant apps. That's yeah, I saw that coming up and I was like, we're going to pivot. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna um, use, we're like, I was like, I have my phone too. We can use my we phone. Can, <laughs> we can, we can use our phone. But yeah, so I took a picture. I don't know if you can tell, but this was my picture. Mm -hmm. And it told me that was my picture that I, that I took in the marsh uh, okay. of that tiny little fern. Mm -hmm. And it told me that it was a sensitive fern. So it gives you a picture of what the um what it'll look summer. like later this summer yeah and it gives you comparison pictures too so especially yeah. if you take a picture of like a plant it's like are you, are you double check double check mm. and then it tells you a description of the plant um it's got the story of the name of why it was called a sensitive fern Sim symbols um apparently sensitive ferns are um symbolized as eternal youth humility humility um, sensitivity, confidence, love, serenity, and rebirth. Who knew? And then um, it has the, if you want to get more sciencey, it's got a scientific name, difficulty rate, um, watering, fertilizing, where it's located. You can get all this information and have this one plant kind of explode scientifically in your brain. And I think that is so cool that you, you know, a lot of times people try to put their... Yeah. Plant net. Is it kind of the same thing? Same thing. Right yeah. Here. This one I couldn't identify. Oh, I th oh, I know. Mm. Are well, you good you're with in Hawaii, so you, you no. Know. no. Oh, that was some amazing. apps have more like some, some apps have more data in them. So maybe picture we'll see this. If I can take a picture of that, and then maybe it'll tell me. Is that the one from the? That's a flower canal. on the canal. See, Kathy. Florist Daisy, mom. Oh. Ah. Yeah, so then See, and this one didn't like find really it. it gives you comparison pictures, it's which I think yeah. that's what it was. Yeah, picture so. that the, the app that Jordan's talking about is like pretty popular, and that's probably why it yeah. has. Yeah, it's got a yeah, lot of stuff on I've there. Yeah, that one I've seen come up now. That yeah, picture this yeah. is that's the one they advertise you can take pictures of a stump and yeah, and it, identify oh, yes. the tree. Yeah, that one's lately really in my face. <laughs> I know that's yeah. what's been crazy because I can take really crappy pictures of a plant, and like everything. there's no way it knows that it can like see this, and then it like tells me exactly what yeah. it is. That's yeah. the fun part yeah. because in the winter it identifies bark. So you can like go up to trees yeah. and like if oh. I take a picture of that bark, it'll tell me what tree it is. Yeah. Oh. It's insanely cool. Yeah. So definitely check Somebody it put out. Some time and effort into that. I yeah. know. Yeah, there was definitely a lot of hands in that cookie pot. But yeah, so yeah, definitely. This was a flower. That's a good saying. Oh, yeah. I like to throw cool. a lot of hands in the cookie jar. Yeah, there were there's so yeah. many people yeah. making cookies and throwing them all in the jar, but yeah, so definitely, if you guys want to, we can take some pictures or we can just kind of move on. Hi there. Good, how are you? I want to know what this moss is, though, because I've been wondering. And then it, like, analyzes. So you don't have to carry a a Feel book guide. around, yeah. yeah. And I kind of, and too, I get really frustrated when I'm trying to flip through the field guide and figure out what's happening because, like, things look very different than one picture. And the way that this gives you multiple pictures, apparently, this is juniper hair cap or hair cap moss on the ground. And I think a lot of times with grasses, too, grasses are really hard, mosses are really hard, but. I just, I just love this app, and yeah. it has little poems about it. You can read poems. <laughs> you can like pick your thing. Do I want to be like poetic this time? But yeah. So as we're going um, to our next stop, we can either point out stuff about nature or different cool trees we find, or I can take more pictures, or we can just talk like we normally do. <laughs> because I think. We're Does gonna... that app only work like in North America? No, it works everywhere. Yeah. I think there, I know it definitely works in North America, but well, I haven't we'll, taken it. We'll find out when I go to Kenya. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now there, you, you've changed total, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I think it, I think it has a, yeah, 
has it all. Yeah. It works. Yeah, I was... I don't know. I haven't been out of the country since I got the app yet. Yeah, but. I know. I haven't either. So I'm like... I mean, it has maps of the U.S. where the plants are. So I'm pretty... It's most definitely in the U.S. See, that one I asked right. for that flower, it said check Western European. Oh, yeah. So, oh, so it's something that was brought in here. They yeah. They those bulbs at Menards. And I checked and I know... Because I was like, that's such a pretty flower. And they're... Yeah, they're from Europe. So... Yeah. But yeah. We can head on over to the next stop for our resume. next verse out of Emerson is on language. So I, I picked this one because I think nature, there's always noises happening, but they're not in our language, which, you know, because birds are talking to each other, frogs are communicating to each other, even trees are communicating together, and I think understanding that there are conversations going on around us all the time is super cool. Um, and so this says, because of the radical correspondence between visible things and human thoughts, natives who have only what is necessary converse in figures. As we go back in history, language becomes more picturesque until its infancy. When, when it is all poetry or all spiritual facts facts are represented by natural symbols so i don't do you want me to read it again that one's a little that one's a little rough but so like the egyptian kid birds and yeah. everything they didn't have even a letter alphabet yeah and if you on. think about nature like movement and things oh, yeah. coming you know words basically came out of nature and i think knowing that before language and after language this is going to be here is kind of crazy to think about um but i always like to listen to everything and try to imagine what they're saying to each other which i think is kind of fun i suck at bird calls to be completely honest <laughs> i know merlin helps you with that the merlin app but um i love these bad boys <laughs> these adorable creatures are my favorite i love herps um i'm kind of strange i i grew up uh in college going to herpetology society and volunteering in the labs and educating with them i was their um education organizer for a year so i love these little guys and they're so understudied which I think is, oh, oh, if you want to come a little move bit to the little. over yonder area, we can move that this. That should be good. I think we're good if you just really move go. forward. Oh, it's too old. Make it by us all right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so these little dudes, um, they're pretty cool. They're kind of hard to find. And instead of disturbing them or finding them that way, um, you can always listen to their calls, just like birds, which I think is super cool. And I found this handy dandy chart here. Oh, upside down chart. That um, will tell you what frogs are mating at what time of year. So right now we have the wood frog, uh, boreal chorus frog, spring peepers, northern lepo leopard frog, and occasionally the um, pickerel frog. So it kind of is nice because you hear a frog call and you're just like, I, I don't know. Like, it's, it's frog, I know that. But this will help you narrow it down. And then there's other apps like Eek, it's the environmental education app on your on um, the internet. And it has a whole bunch of really cool frog calls all lined up. So it looks like this. And you can kind of just click on the animal. So like, we're gonna do this really mad toad here. <laughs> and we're gonna click on him. And then you can read a little bit about him or listen to the little guy going. He's singing. Huh? He's yeah, singing. he's like, he does a cute little sound. So I think that's really cool too, to be able to compare. Or when you're at home, just kind of quiz yourself. Cause I do that cause I'm a nerd, but <laughs> you guys are also nerdy cause you're here on a 9 a.m. on a Saturday. So um, yeah, it's a really cool way to learn about stuff a little bit more. 
Um, I heard some frogs out here before a little bit as we were going. Um, but I don't know if they're really gonna be out. It's early. I thought they would be out more, but the spring peepers are the only ones. Oh, on Dubai Avenue. Oh, oh. When I, Tuesday, they were really not Yeah, yeah. Well, that was yeah. later in the day, too. That yeah. was yeah. almost sunset. Yeah. They really go yeah. nuts. I know when I leave, I work at Century World, and when I leave, they are screaming at like 10 o'clock at night. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I, yeah. always, <laughs> I always leave work, and I'm like, yeah, the little yeah. frogs are going. <laughs> You work but, up in the big building up here? Or the, or the... I work at PJ's. I'm a waitress. So, okay. yeah. But it's not just frogs that communicate. It's also plants. So, trees are super, super cool. And also fungus. Everyone loves mushrooms. But they actually communicate with each other. They have a symbiotic relationship. So, these fungus will connect with um, the trees. And they will tell them where nutrients is. And fungus also breaks stuff down. So it helps the tree and the um, tree gives them cover too and protects them a little bit. So it's super cool because I just never thought that trees would communicate with each other. But the fact that there's fungus in the ground that help them, um, microbial fungus that help them know if their roots need to go deeper, if they need to go out more, if they come up to the top. This picture is kind of not accurate though because roots only go like three or four feet down so ignore the second half but um this picture i just thought was really cool to explain how they connect their roots together um and i don't know what's under our ground just baffles me all the time because it's just so cool but um yeah as we're walking we can listen for bird calls if you know a bird yell it out because i want to know more birds um, too, yeah. And I will I will do my best with frog calls because I love frogs. So, <laughs> so for our final stop, we are going to question our thoughts on beauty, which I think this is my favorite stop. So. <laughs> yeah. um, so this verse is, but this beauty of nature, which is seen and felt as beauty, is the least part. The show of day the dew of morning, the rainbows, <clears throat> mountains, orchards and blossoms, stars, moonlight, shadows in still waters, and the like. If too eagerly hunted, become shows merely, become shows merely, and mock us with their unreality. And I think when you find those really crazy pictures of national parks, where you look at the picture and you're like, that's not real. Like, how can that be real? Or even if you stand by a waterfall, it just doesn't, it's so amazing that it just doesn't feel real. And those are gorgeous in their own right. But I think, and important, of course, but I think questioning what is actually beautiful is something really special. And the reserve does a really great job of this. So if you look over here, I know a lot of people will see destruction because there's a lot of limbs down, there's a lot of fixing things, there's a lot of trees that are dead, but I think this corner is one of the most beautiful parts of the reserve. Stags, which are the trees that are dead, you know, the tops are broken off, the bark's fallen off, it just doesn't look very nice, are some of the most important parts of nature because they house a whole bunch of different types of animals. And when the trees fall, they are cover for our adorable little snakes and a lot of other really cute things around the reserve. So, um, <clears throat> trees like this, this one's a little bit of a more early stag. It's got branches still, but you can kind of see the bark at the bottom is falling off. And that's a big indicator because when the bark falls off, the wood's drier and it's easier for woodpeckers like these bad boys to get in there um paleated woodpeckers see this is the red that goes all the way to the there but if they weren't it would or wait no i lied males have a red line here and then females just have black so um yeah so peleateds are super super cool they can actually make um tunnels into trees that are about two feet deep so even though this looks like a really shallow hole this is really really big inside and then because they do all this work and they leave and find a new place for next year, other little guys can come in and take over 
and um, cavity nesters can use all those holes in the trees to um, have their babies or nest or just be safe. Raccoons, squirrels, they're just good to live in. Um, <coughs> another really cool thing about woodpeckers is when they peck trees, um, there's a whole bunch of wood chips that fly off. So there's someone coming, so we might want to walk over here a little bit. Um, there's a whole bunch of little wood chips that fly off the tree and it helps in uh, decomposition. So all those animals, um, when woodpeckers peck those little trees, if you find little holes, that that's a lot of times when they're trying to find food and they're not just testing to try to find the perfect spot <laughs> to make a home. I had a kid ask me that once and they were like, woodpeckers are very indecisive. And I was like, what? what? Where, where are you going with this, my guy? And he was like, well, they make all the holes everywhere and then they find a hole to like have a nest in. And I'm like, no, 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 we're gonna, we're gonna back up the truck here, my guy. <laughs> so I think a lot of people have misconceptions about woodpeckers and stags because yes, they are dangerous when it comes to Schmeekly if it would fall on someone. But I think if they're off trail, the importance of them is so much more. And even though these brush piles kind of look bad too, I was saying before that's glossy buckthorn, which is the invasive buckthorn species that the foresters cut down. So even though these kind of look bad right now, it's a different way to visualize taking care of the beautiful forest we have. So even though it might not look like the most beautiful place ever, moving your perspective to the importance of what's around us more than how pretty it is that society says it's pretty, can open up your eyes to a whole new level of beauty that you never really thought of or considered before. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to look for more stags as we head all the way back. Um, oh, also, forgot to mention, iNaturalist is another, you guys all know iNaturalist. Another thing though, is they do have a sound portion. So you can record the sounds you hear and um, submit it, which I think is really cool because, um, plug my reptiles again. Reptiles are a super understudied species because the creep, no one wants to touch the creepy crawlies, which I understand, but um, the more we know about them as bioindicators, it's super important to, to be able to keep everything safe because they will also let us know when things aren't happening. Forgot to add the story, but I love this story. So I live across from like a retention pond down by Madison, my parents do. And when we moved there, there was hundreds, when I tell you hundreds of little baby frogs that were like this big. And we picked them all up from the side of the road and we took them over to the big lake to drop them off. Um, and then the next year it got quieter because that lake, it would just scream all night and I loved it. But it got quieter the next year. And the year after that, the, there weren't any frogs. And it was super sad because the salt that was going, my theory is the salt that was coming from the roads fell into the pond and changed the salinity so that frogs couldn't survive. But the crazy part is that year that there were no frogs, you stepped in the lawn and it vibrated with baby crickets. So it threw off the fact that there were supposed to be frogs there and the crickets took over. So I don't, I'm really interested to see what happens this year. Um, but nature's all around us and it's always moving and flowing even if you don't see it and i think a lot of people just live in it and they don't see it and i think making sure that you're observing it and trying to see it every day will change your daily life you know your drive to work there's nature all around us and being able to appreciate that is something awesome. super super cool so um as we walk to our final stop we can, I know there's some really, really cool stags up there that I will point out. Um, so, our, for our final verse, this is honestly my favorite in the whole book so far. I'm gonna share it with you and your mind's gonna be blown. Okay. I'm kind of excited. So, it says, to the attentive eye, each moment of the year has its own beauty. And in the same field, it beholds every hour, a picture which was never seen before, and which shall never be seen again. Hmm. And I love that verse because nature is always changing, but at the same time, it's so stable. 
and I think that ability to always change but still be here is something that is so magical and should be appreciated by so many more people but to be enlightened to that state I feel like doesn't happen in a lot of people's lifetimes um, so that's why I wanted to do this and share the combination of knowledge and like ad admire it just the ability to admire it I guess um, I remember coming into practice or coming into school and walking and it just being the woods you know like there were trees there was grass there was leaves but then as I started learning things and growing my knowledge and appreciating everything it became so much more than just trees and grass and leaves and there was with the knowledge came beauty and a higher understanding of things so I hope you guys can dive a little deeper into nature um, in the future if you would like to we can head on back over there um, if you left anything in the pavilion otherwise you guys can head back out and use what you've learned today um, I highly doubt we're gonna head back out but that's okay cuz <laughs> AC is gonna feel really good right now um, but yeah thank you guys for coming out on a 9 a.m. on Saturday morning um, it means a lot to us that you guys are always here so thank you this is my last one for the for the semester but I know you guys have I know you two have definitely made it to both of mine so I very much appreciate it that you guys came so thank you, thank you. Yeah.